Hi, and welcome to our first session in the AI 101 series. I am so excited that you're here. Now, before we dive in, I want to state my intention for this series so that we're all clear up front. My goal is to make sure that we all have a shared baseline of knowledge and proficiency with AI technology. Now, I know that we've got members of all different levels. For some of you, this may seem a little basic. For others, it might feel like a lot, like you're drinking from a fire hose. But regardless of where you're starting, the most important thing is to approach this with beginner's mind. Just be open, be curious. And second, to have tenacity. I promise you, if you just stick with it through these sessions, this will all become second nature in fast order. So this series includes six short videos. Each video is just five to six minutes long, so you should be able to get through all of them in less than 45 minutes. Okay, backstory. About two years ago, my daughter Megan, our CEO, came to me and said, Dad, I really think AI is gonna be a thing. And my first thought, because I've been reading up on it, I said, you think? But honestly, she gave me permission and a mission to do a deep dive to figure out what this technology really means for leaders and business owners like us. And frankly, it was like throwing me into the honeypot. I love technology. And what I've discovered since then has been nothing short of revolutionary. It's already saving me at least 10 hours a week, and the quality of my work is surprisingly, actually shockingly, better. I'm more creative, more efficient, and more curious than ever. But I also know that for many people, the topic of AI can feel overwhelming because it sounds complicated, maybe even a little bit intimidating. So to pull back the curtain and demystify it, I want to start at the most basic level. And that's why I've entitled this first session, What is AI and Why Does It Matter? And in this first session, I want to answer three critical questions. Question number one, what is this AI thing really? Well, let's start with a simple definition. At its core, artificial intelligence is simply the ability of a machine to mimic human intelligence to learn, to reason, and to recognize patterns. Now, the science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And when you first see what AI can do, it really does feel like magic. It can draft an email, analyze a financial statement, or even help you brainstorm a new product idea or a course in seconds or minutes. But just like a magic trick, once you understand how it works, the mystery disappears and you're left with a powerful and practical tool. And the biggest breakthrough is that we can now interact with this incredible technology through simple conversation. You don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to be a computer whiz. If you could write an email or delegate a task to an assistant, you've got all the skills you need to use AI effectively. Now, what we're working with are called large language models. You've probably heard that term, or LLMs. Think of them not as simple chatbots, but as vast reservoirs of the world's knowledge that you can talk to and collaborate with. Which brings us to question number two. How should we begin to think about AI? And I want to give you three metaphors. First of all, AI is a teammate, not a tool. Now, this is the most important mindset shift that I want you to make. I want you to stop thinking of AI as like just another tool, like a word processor or a calculator. I want you to start thinking of it as a teammate. What's the difference? Well, a tool is passive. A hammer just sits there until you pick it up. It has no intelligence of its own. You provide all the skill. But a teammate? A teammate's an active collaborator. Second, AI is also a thinking partner, not an assistant. What do I mean by that? I mean that AI is at its best when you use it to brainstorm, to challenge your assumptions, and to get unstuck. So for example, if I'm working on a new keynote presentation, I don't just ask it to write the speech for me. I'll say, here's my core message. What are three different ways that I could open this talk to grab the attention of the audience? So then it acts as a creative sounding board offering fresh perspectives that I might not have considered on my own. It helps me think better. 
And finally, AI is a force multiplier, not a replacement. I love this image. This is about leverage. A force multiplier takes the effort you put in and amplifies the result. So for example, my executive assistant, Jim, is a, is a great example. He recently used AI to process the session notes from a full day of my private coaching calls. Now that task would have taken him in the past the better part of two days. Now it takes him less than two hours. The AI didn't replace him, it multiplied his effectiveness, freeing him up to focus on higher value projects. So in summary, think about delegating to a human assistant. If you give vague, unclear instructions, you're probably not gonna be very happy with the results. It's that old principle, garbage in, garbage out. And the same is true for AI. The quality of your output depends entirely on the quality of your input. So when you start treating AI like a capable teammate, giving it clear context, specific instructions, and good examples, the results are nothing less than astonishing. It becomes an extension of your own thinking, helping you to do your own best work faster. And that brings us to question number three. Why does this matter right now? Well, you've probably heard the saying this book going around, and I believe it's absolutely true, and it's this. You won't be replaced by AI. You'll be replaced by someone who knows how to use AI. Now, I don't intend this to be a scare tactic, but it's a reality check. The pace of change is accelerating, and the employers and the customers of the future are going to expect you to be AI-enabled. This technology is becoming a fundamental part of how business gets done, from marketing and sales to operations and customer service. But here's the good news. This represents literally one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had to boost our creativity, improve our efficiency, and get the double win, which I talk about so much, the ability to win at work and succeed at life. So imagine being able to generate a first draft of a marketing plan in minutes instead of days, or analyzing customer feedback to spot trends that you might've missed, or creating a standard operating procedure for a complex task simply by describing it. Now, these aren't future possibilities. These are things that you can do right now. And by delegating the right tasks to your new AI teammate, you can free yourself up to focus on the high leverage work that only you can do building relationships, casting vision, and making those critical leadership decisions, and create the margin you need to tend to the other things in life that matter most. So my encouragement to you today is simple. Stay curious. Don't worry if you feel a little overwhelmed. You're always confused right until the moment you're not. And the goal of these first few sessions is to give you a solid foundation so you can start experimenting with confidence. Up next, we're gonna look at choosing the right platform. And by the way, if you're not in the AI Business Lab Mastermind, and if you're interested in learning more, check us out at fullfocus.co slash mastermind. We'll see you in the next video.